Christine Johns. Christine is the Senior Director, Academic and International Strategies at the University of Calgary. She's also a very active speaker, community leader, volunteer, and a very proud mother of two. Let's give our uh, uh, warm welcome to Christine. configurations, but one thing they have in common is the dynamic relationship between work, whether in or out of the home, and life. Work-life balance is a hot and highly studied topic, but over the next six minutes and 26 seconds, I'm going to share with you why the work-life balance conversation just needs to stop. In the interest of time, let's focus on the demographics that have seen the greatest change. Over the last four decades, the number of dual-income families with children has grown exponentially across Canada. This has been due overwhelmingly to the number of women entering the workforce, and with that has come with a proliferation of advice being given to them on how to balance it all. An Amazon search of women and work-life balance produces 675 books, the majority of which have been written in the last five years. Women are told to lean in for success, lean out to the corporate model. You can have it all, you just need to work hard enough. You can't have it all, at least not yet. And there is no all. But at some level, it comes down to balance. So let's look at the meaning of the word balance. A situation in which different elements are in equal proportions, neither tipping the scale. Work-life balance. The ideal state we all seek to achieve, the grail of working women. <coughs> Workplaces promote it, HR departments policy it, and employees seek it. But how can it be achieved? Carefully adding elements until you reached a balanced state. And what does success look like? Well, today, I juggled a morning routine, lunches packed, kids to school and daycare, and at work minutes before an important meeting commences. Success, everything in perfect balance. But this balanced state should really come with a warning sign. Caution, falling rocks ahead. Everything is subject to external forces, and none more so than our complex lives. A slight shift, a life event, a loss, an opportunity, and the rocks topple to the ground. Failure. Five years ago, work-life balance was how I defined success. I was educated, had a young family, was active in the community, and my husband and I had demanding jobs that we loved. After our daughter was born, I took a six months leave, managing my portfolio um, while away in exchange for a reduced work week from the remainder of the year on my return. Life was wonderful, work was fulfilling. Two years later, after our son came along, a bit earlier than expected, I took a full year of maternity leave and followed the same arrangements I previously had. As a family, everything was in a state of equilibrium. I had found the work-life balance grail and it felt great to desire it, to reach for it and to succeed at it, until suddenly it was gone. That desired work-life balance that I had worked so hard for toppled in an instant. This is the problem with balance. The smallest change can send one side toppling to the ground. Failure at some point is almost certain, as our lives are never static. Our topple came during a family trip to Florida. Our one-year-old son rushed to the ER. Hours spent on the phone with doctors in Calgary. Emergency surgery, numerous blood transfusions, and days spent in a hospital bed instead of at Disney World. A life-threatening diagnosis for our youngest, all so very far from home. A world turned upside down certainly for our son, but also for our three-year-old daughter as she struggled to understand. Her mom and her brother in the hospital and dad trying to create some sort of vacation memories for her, but kids always know. The next two years would bring over 18 surgeries, numerous hospital admissions, and countless tests, scans, and procedures. When treatment in Calgary was not successful, we received notice that our son's care was being transferred to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. By this point, hospitals had already become a part of our extension of our workspace as we tried to keep up with our day jobs. But you adapt and you find a new normal. My son and I relocate to Toronto. Our family living 3,200 kilometers apart, each of us fulfilling a role, um, solo parenting a little one in less than ideal circumstances. A leave of absence, I was told. The scale had tipped and the only way to survive it was to remove work from the equation but I needed a sense of normal. So with the support of my employer, I worked remotely. My office became the Ronald McDonald House Library. 
Working hours shifted to accommodate appointments and admissions, and teleconferences became my method of attending meetings and connection to my colleagues. Work was undertaken from the most unconventional locations, a family courtyard, a playroom at Sick Kids Hospital, a clinic waiting room. This arrangement also brought new friends and experiences that brought us joy and treasured one-on-one -on -one time between my son and I and my husband and our daughter. With a work portfolio successfully managed, a home life that although separated was thriving, and a little one's health that was growing stronger by the day, everything started to feel in order again. The work-life balance of my yesterday no longer resembled it today. Were we in perfect balance? No. In fact, the scale would tip multiple times a day. Balance was not what was achieved. But what if balance was not the goal? What if it wasn't the grail? What if instead of balance, everything in equal proportions, we started talking about integration? What if we reworked the balance scale metaphor to one of work-life integration and understanding that we bring our whole selves to all aspects of our lives? How would this change our perception if we weren't setting ourselves up for failure? The boundaries between work and life, family and career are already blurred due to technology. What if we talked about technology as a way to build better work-life integration practices instead of worrying about it tethering us to work 24-7? What happens when we do away with the guilt associated with being away from work, as most work can be done outside of 9 to 5? Most work cultures still remain office-focused, but we have the power to change that. In her TED Talk, We, um, we All Can Have It All, Anne Reeves Slaughter says when we take care of family first, Work never comes second. Embracing integration means the imbalance that has been so problematic in the past becomes the workplace of today that so many of us seek. It is time to end that conversation on work-life balance. As a quote on the wall at Ronald McDonald House says, nothing is carved in stone. That is true for our own work-life situation. We need to own it, adapt it, change it, and allow ourselves and the organizations we work for to thrive. Thank you.